What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Pastor Keenan, along with my good friend Nick. Nick, say hey, man. Hey, how's it going? What's up? This is the second episode of the Everyday Christian on Fruition Church's podcast. Thank you to each and every person out there that has uh, tuned in, that has downloaded uh, the podcast. We're across all kinds of different areas now, Apple, Google, uh, Spotify, you know, just different areas and platforms to be able to get the gospel out. We're so thankful for the people uh, who have supported us. Uh, I think we're up to, like, what, Nick, 24 now? Yeah, we have a 24 downloads across all the platforms, and that was before Google. I think we just uh, got put on there probably last night or so. Yeah. Um, so, of course, that was just one episode, so it's not right. too bad. Absolutely, man. 24. I mean, we are rock stars. Uh, probably putting out a application for bodyguards next week. If anybody's over six foot and uh, can lift weights, hey, come talk mm-hmm. to us. Uh, you know, we'll definitely need it out in public, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, the man. full armor of God just absolutely. paid support for it, Oh, so. man, that is Nick's attempt at a Christian joke. That's yeah. how it goes. You know, so. right? That's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> the full armor of God. Uh, either way, uh, like I said, we just want to do, we're, we're doing this podcast to uh, help relate the Bible to an everyday Christian. We struggle, we go through some stuff. Uh, We're always trying to be our best, even though we're not our best. We're through mountains and valleys and ups and downs. And, you know, it seems like the wind's blowing. Sometimes it's calm. There's waves coming, a lot of different stuff. Uh, So basically what we do is is we take uh, the sermon from Sunday, the, the previous Sunday, we break it down into everyday terms where people can understand, apply to their life. And it was so cool and refreshing. Got to talk to some people this week uh, that's actually listened to the podcast that goes to church with us. And, uh, you know, they said one of the cool things about it was, was that, uh, you know, even though they heard the message on Sunday, it felt like that they were hearing the message again for the first time. So that's really awesome. How'd you feel about it, Nick? Yeah, I mean, it's it's awesome. Just, uh, you know, I mean, just the fact that we kind of just jumped into this and we got such positive feedback from it. We we go head first, man. Yeah, we go head first. Of course, (laughs) you know, everyone's first complaint was their sound quality so here we are with mics now absolutely once, so. yeah i mean we yeah. literally put everything on a uh, credit card every you know we got great credit so we just uh you know put like six thousand dollars on a credit card mm-hmm. totally lying about that wasn't six thousand felt like it uh but yes hopefully uh this episode right here will have some awesome sound quality where you'll be like yo those dudes are professional uh fantastic great shout out to them right oh, yeah. so we yeah that awesome little funky music walking uh, absolutely us, funky so. music in the beginning man this is great stuff i mean this is wonderful radio uh, either way, like I said, we're just trying to take each and every message that we do every Sunday, break it down uh, into terms where people can understand and do stuff and just apply it to their everyday walk. So uh, Sunday's message was entitled, When the Church Was the Church. When the church was the church. Now, uh, you know, we're going back to Acts chapter 2, when the church began. Now, that you know, that's a, uh, it seems like a very cliche uh, Bible topic for uh, whenever a church was born, or they call it a homecoming, you know, uh, uh, I, I don't know, different denominations call it different things, Nick, but uh, like, you know, I always heard it called like the homecoming service or something like that, and it seems like, you know, that people would always preach from Acts chapter 2, there was 120 in the upper room, and they didn't stop until the Spirit of God came down, and then, depending on what denomination you are, uh, they would talk about, you know, if you were kind of charismatic and Pentecostal, they would go on with the, uh, you know, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and and and, uh, you know, they were spilling out and speaking in tongues and all of that good stuff. If you were kind of like low-key Baptist, you know, they kind of left the whole spilling out and talking in tongues. And the, uh, you know, they left that mm. part out. It was just like, yo, the church was born. Hallelujah. Let's go eat some potluck. What do you think? Yeah, you know? I can almost scare people away right at the beginning. <laughs> there, <you know? laughs> yeah. And uh, so, yeah, you know, it just kind of depended on what denominational setting you were in as far as to how, how that story went. Uh, but we took it just a little bit further than that on Sunday, talking about when the church was the church, when the church was first born. And, you know, those 120 that were there that day praying in one mind and one accord, that's what the Bible says, they prayed down the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that they were baptized and in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Spirit, that they fell out into the uh, streets 9 a.m. in the morning. People thought they were drunk. People thought that they just come from the club the night before. They, you know, still had that smell on them and that look on them. And, you know, they'd spent all their money at the bar and whatever else. And, uh, you know, and, and and people were just amazed by what was going on. And people thought that they were drunk. And then our main man, Peter, man, I love Peter so much because Peter is somebody that I can identify with. Uh, Peter was like, he, man, he was, he was quick to anger. Like he was always angry. He was trying to like cut people's ears off and fight all the time and dropping four letter words on people. I mean, like, you know, I think Peter was somebody, Nick, and you may attest to this, but I think Peter was somebody that the common everyday Christian 
could apply their life to right or wrong. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's one of those things, you know, we always think as a Christian, we have to be perfect, but no one was perfect other than Jesus. So, you know, just being able to see someone who is seen, seen so highly, um, right. You know, throughout, absolutely. You know, the Bible, um, is making mistakes yet constantly being forgiven and, you know, giving grace, um, and constantly still being supported. Um, absolutely. Moving forward. And how, how cool was it that Jesus looked at him and said, yo, you are going to be the rock that I build my church upon. It was the same dude that denied him three times in the inner courts, you know, mm-hmm. this, that denied, I don't know Jesus. I'm not around Jesus denied him three times, but yet Jesus is like, I'm still going to start my church with you, brother. What do you think about yeah, that? It's, it's awesome how God uses the misfits of us. Um, constantly, you know, the, the smallest, the meekest, the wildest, the craziest. I mean, using Paul like he did. Absolutely. Um, after, yeah. you know, he was out here murdering people yeah, uh, for, right. in I mean, Jesus' yeah, name, I mean, you know, over here. But Paul was literally like the first horror movie, okay? I mean, like, we got you, Michael Myers, and you're Jason Voorhees. Let's talk about Paul. You know, let's talk about that whole situation where he was just murdering Christians and laughing about it. That was mm-hmm. the first horror movie, really. And then, and then God done a wonderful work in his life, and he ended up writing two-thirds of the New Testament. Fantastic. Fantastic stuff. Uh, but, you know, Peter, man, he, he steps up. He takes control of the situation. There's so much chaos going on. Uh, we do know from the Bible that God is not the author of chaos. You know, Peter steps up on this rock. Oh, crazy. You know, like, it's so much foreshadowing here. You're going to be the rock that I build my church upon. What does Peter do? He jumps up on a rock. And he starts preaching this message. And he preaches this message, and he tells, you know, people, he's like, yo, look, he's like, you know, repent, do this and that. God's about to do something great. You know, he's like, you have to be, you have to be saved, you have to be delivered and set free. I mean, like, Peter is just preaching his heart out and his guts out, man. And the Bible says that on that day alone that there were 3,000 added to the kingdom of God. And we talked about this Sunday, Nick. How crazy is it that in 2022, even 2021, uh, whatever the case may be, we get excited, you know, like if three people got saved in 2021, we're like, fantastic, praise you, Jesus, wonderful. Okay, that's great. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we should be praising every soul that's saved. But, but think about this, 3,000 people in one day? Mm-hmm. Do you think that we're shortchanging ourselves just a little bit? Oh, one hundred percent. As I mean, to what yeah, God I mean. can do, we're like, yo, three, praise you, Jesus. He put three thousand in the kingdom in one day. What are we doing? Yeah, I mean, it's just. I mean, it seems like you know we shortchange what He can do and what's possible through God. You know, He's such a much. He's a much bigger God than really we've ever. Um, giving him credit for sometimes, right? You know? I mean, Absolutely, he, he's able to do so much more than we, you know, allow him in our minds to do. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, he's, you know, we're we're happy, you know, with the short and the small victories. You know, we save one or two here or there, um, but you know, it's just like you know, thinking, oh God, I need you to pay this bill when he wants to, you know, load your bank account up. Oh you man, know, it's just some small Listen, things. Listen, you yeah. start talking there about money, people's yeah, like, we're, we're gonna, gonna have gonna downloads, away, we're yeah. gonna have downloads, yeah. we're gonna have a hundred <laughs> downloads by in the morning. You're like, what did they? you know? Everybody yeah. said, oh man, we got some money coming. Let me hit that download button. But it's like, I mean, we we try. God to heal scrape on a bruise, but not to heal cancer. You know, that's just one of the biggest things um, that you see constantly is, you know, how small our faith really is um, Mm -hmm. in those regards. You know, I believe God can heal somebody, but uh, bringing somebody back from the dead, I don't know about that. (laughs) Right, man. And that's what, like, we talked about that last week, too, about, you know, I mean, that was our mandate. That was what Jesus told the disciples to do. You know, I mean, it was like, that was part of it, bring people back from the dead. And you're like, oh, man, that's, uh, that's pretty crazy. But that's who God is. You know, that's how big he is and what he can do. Um, so 3,000 people that day alone added to the kingdom of God. Well, then this happens. They start the church, man. The church is formed in that moment. And we came from Acts 2, uh, I think it was 42 through 47, if I'm not mistaken. You can uh, quote me on that, misquote me. I don't know, man. It was somewhere right towards the end there. Um, but it got to talking about how basically the, these people would come together uh, they would pray together. They would worship together. They would go to church together. Uh, they, they Here's the crazy part. They started selling everything that they had, everything that they had worked for, everything that they had put their hands to, they started selling. And, and they would take the money and they would give to other people in the community that was in need. That is mind-blowing to me. There's a lot of different things there. We're going to jump into it. Uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about was, and I always give, you know, most of the time, three points every Sunday. Uh, I think, honestly, if you start, you know, going five and six, people are, like, tuning out. If you go one, people are like, well, you really didn't go deep enough. So three is always a good number. But either way, uh, the first word that really popped into my mind was dedicate. Dedicate. Okay. At the first of it, it says that that the people, that the church was dedicated to the teachings of the apostles. 
they were dedicated to the teachings of the apostles. And, you know, I, I, I basically gave the example on Sunday that, you know what, I can preach, I can teach, I can yell, I can scream, I can talk nice, I can, you know, pray, I can lead, I can do all of these things. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how long, how hard, how much that I preach or that I teach. It matters how much the congregation or the people are willing to lean in and learn from the Word of God and the man or woman of God in that hour, right or wrong, Nick? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's up to you. I mean, we've talked about this even last week. You know, it's up to that person really to, you know, make that decision. Like, is this what I want to do? Or, you know, is something more important to me? You know, what excuses mm-hmm. are you going to use? Right. Um, you know, it's it's it really is up to you. Your, your personal relationship with Jesus is your personal relationship. So right. it's as deep or as shallow as you want it to be. Absolutely. And, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, like... <laughs> You know, if you want to get in the gym and lose weight and get in shape, man, you can't blame it on anybody else. Your your results comes directly from your work. And, you know, it's just like anything else. You want to get out of debt, don't blame it on anybody else. Your work and, and your results come from your effort into it. Same way with the relationship with God. Same way with learning. Don't take what, you know, don't take what the pastor says on Sunday to the bank golden for 100. Not saying that, you know, that, that, that they're not right. I'm just saying that people should know the Bible. You know, you should strengthen your relationship uh, because your pastor is not always going to be there to pray you out of a situation or to talk you out of a situation or to tell you what you need to do, where you need to be at, or, yo, this is found in Proverbs chapter 3 or whatever, you know. Like, it's so important for us to know the Bible on our own and to help grow our own spirituality, right? Exactly. I mean, that just goes back to the word, you know, your first point of dedicate. You know, and I, I made the, I think, post on Facebook a couple of days back. You know, I said we have a lot of dead Christians, not enough dedicated Christians. Absolutely. Um, you know, just like reaching in, like in the very first part of that verse, you know, it talks about how, like, this isn't the time to separate or to split apart. It's the right. time to come together. Exactly. Um, and, you know, dedicate your lives to what's going on. I mean, exactly. these people were literally selling everything they had. They were so dedicated that they were selling everything they had to yeah. help other people. And not only that, but they were being dedicated to what the apostles were teaching. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing about it. Like, whenever you go to a church, ladies and gentlemen, and I want you to listen to this very closely. Whenever you come into a church, it's important to understand the vision that the church has. The vision, and that vision comes from, whether you like it or not, it comes from the man or woman of God that is leading that church. God speaks to the leader. The leader spreads the vision. People buy into the vision, and then the vision grows because the people buy into it. So you have to be dedicated to what they're teaching and preaching. You know, if, if if you're going into a church and they talking crazy, like what we talked about at first, they're talking crazy, bringing people back from the dead and, you know, like all of this good stuff. And you're like, uh, I just, uh, I'm happy with, uh, like you said, uh, my scab healing up on my arm. You know, that may not be the setting for you. <laughs> that may not be the church for you. That may not be the area that you're supposed to be in. And like I said Sunday, man, like, you know, churches are like Neapolitan ice cream. They are different flavors everywhere. You can find a church on every corner. We live in the Bible Belt of the United mm-hmm. States, man. It's like there are more churches than, than I don't know, like dollar stores. That's They're starting to compete just a little bit. There might be yeah, more dollar stores. probably pretty equitable at this point. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, there's always a chance to try something different different, but you have to be dedicated, man. Listen to what the Word of God says, 2 Timothy 3.16. It says, God has transmitted his very substance into every scripture, for it is God-breathed. It will empower you by its instruction and correction. Now, I really hit on this Sunday because it's very important. The Bible not only tells you what to do, but the Bible corrects you from what you're doing wrong. Now, We love to read the Bible for inspiration. We love to read the Bible to feel good. But we should also read it and know the Bible to change and correct our lifestyles and our patterns. That makes a huge difference. And if we're dedicated to that, we know what we're doing wrong and how to get it right. But it says, It will empower you by its instruction and correction, giving you the strength, listen to this, to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. So if you know the Bible, Nick, if you are dedicated to reading, not only reading, but praying, and not only praying, but coming to church, not only coming to church, but listening to the pastor, if you're dedicated in that, it says that it can take you in the right direction. And not only that, it can take you deeper into the path of godliness, which is the direction you want to go, right or wrong. Am I right? Oh, yeah, exactly. I didn't want to be crazy, but I mean, (laughs) yeah, I mean, we're we're I mean, we are called to be peculiar people. Right. I mean, set apart. (laughs) I mean, we are that chosen generation, man. We are supposed to be going in the right direction. And honestly, let's be honest. Let's be honest today. If you're dedicated, you're going in the right direction, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 
You know, of course, as long as you're dedicated to the right thing. <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah, hey I go. mean, you know, I, I didn't want to throw that out there, but yeah. yes, I mean, you know, if if your leader, if your pastor, or whoever's you know is shepherding your church, if they're in the mode of the Bible, in, in I call it God mode, not like they are God, but like they are hearing from God, they are listening to God, they're being led by God, they're in the Spirit. You know, as long as they're that, like you know, it is our job and our responsibility as as a congregation, as a church, to support that vision, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like, um, I mean, you know, the, as you're preaching on a Sunday, you know, it's not necessarily your words, it's God's words flowing through you absolutely, um, into the congregation. So, I mean, if you're following what you're saying, you know, by proxy, you're following God and what he's saying. Right, 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 right. And, and so, and so they were dedicated, man, and that stood out to me. The second word was congregate, was congregate. The Bible said that they would congregate in the temple courts on the daily and pray and worship. It wasn't just a Wednesday at 7 p.m. or 6 p.m., whatever time y'all fellowship. It wasn't just a Sunday morning or a Sunday night. The Bible says that they met daily to congregate. I think we get in trouble today, Nick, because we relegate or designate church to two days a week. You know, Wednesday night, Sunday morning. That's our church time. That's the only time the church doors are open. It's something that's like some kind of automatic lock or something, you know, mm-hmm. like at 6.30 on Wednesday, it just unlocks automatically. People come in and then like at 9, it locks back, whatever. And we think honestly that 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 like the Spirit of God is in church on Wednesdays and Sundays. Well, what about Tuesday at 2 p.m.? What about what about Thursday at 5.30 in the afternoon? What's wrong with having church then? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of... Um uh, a certain spin on this, you know, you, you think about all the other places that are open, you know, not necessarily 24 seven, but open every single day of the week. I before mean, the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Before, yeah. Before <laughs> all that craziness ensued. Right. White um, Castle. Yeah. That's what came to my mind, man. White Castle. But I mean, Walmart. in specific, you know, like the bars, I mean, you know, it's like, you know, if the, the church you isn't that, open. You go that yeah. angle. Okay. Yeah. Well, if the we church isn't open. We can't go Walmart. We can't no, go we're, we're talking about people who bar. need help. Yeah. We're talking about people who need help and they're seeking it in the wrong places. <laughs> if you're at Walmart, you need help. Yeah. I'm just saying, but go ahead. Go ahead. I'm with you. No, but you know, if we're seeking, you know, like we have so many people out there who are, you know, going to the bars at late at night, um, you know, and they're, you know, seeking whatever help they're seeking there, uh, just making their problems worse in the long run. I mean, yeah. you know, but the church is only open two days a week, you know, that's kind of a, uh, oxymoron, you know, in and of itself Absolutely. there, yeah. you know, yeah. we're, we're kind of thinking, okay, you know, we're, we're not even making ourselves accept, making ourselves accept, accessible. I can't talk tonight. Accessible. There we go. I don't even I know, know what we're, you know, said. Yeah, we're making accessible. Ac- <laughs> that's, yeah. going, that's going on Google next week. Yeah, we're, we're going, uh, we may get paid for that. I'm hey, not sure. We never know, but, um, you know, we're not making ourselves as accessible, um, as we go. need to be, we're getting right. there. Um, so that's, you know, the, the craziest thing, you know, if, and it's crazy too, cause you know, somebody will bother, Hey, can I talk to you? Oh no, right now I'm busy. Um, you know, and you catch yourself doing that on occasions, you know, you know, someone actually needs help. And so, you know, you don't make yourself accessible in that moment. And so they're, <laughs> they're going to go, I'm going to repeat that word until I get it right repeatedly. Yes. Um, but you know, they're going to go somewhere else to try and get, you know, that help. They're going to go to a bottle. They're going to go to a pill bottle, <laughs> yeah. um, anything like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's definitely something, you know, being that the church is, you know, only open two days a week. You know, people see that as, okay, the only way I can get the help I need right, right. Um, is two days a week. Going back to being accessible. Um, and I said it right the first yeah, time, by the way, good for you, yeah. <laughs> but I, I have to be, I have to be completely honest because, and, and I want to take my pastor hat off, man. I, I love being a preacher. I love being a pastor. I love my church. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm just a normal human being that screws up on the daily that goes through stuff, you know? Um, so whenever you said, make yourself accessible, it was really funny because the first thought that came to my mind was, was that sometimes, um, I'll see my phone ringing <laughs> And totally 100% honesty, and, and hey, if you lie and you dine, I know other people have done this too, but I'll see my phone ringing, and I'm like, oh, I should answer the phone, but I don't answer the phone. And then as soon as it, as soon as it quits ringing, I, like, I pick it up, and I'm like, hey, what's up? What's going on? What do you need? You know, like, it's just like, you know, it's like, oh, man. I'm, you know, modern day mentality of not wanting to answer a phone call. Absolutely. It's like, man, I don't want to talk on the phone, but I will text you. I will burn you up. You know, like, I will shoot you 47 texts, but, ah, oh, that four-minute phone call could change your life, but I don't know if I want to answer it. So I that, have that right there, that I think, hits on another point you make about, uh, you know, communicating. Yeah, <laughs> we're, exactly. We're going to get into that. Yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah, we're going to get into that here in just a little bit, but I know, man, like, that is the everyday struggle. That is the everyday Christian where it's like, I will text you all day long, but man, having a phone conversation, 
taking lunch to go talk to you. Like that's really the, you know, Mm -hmm. that's where it becomes, I think where it's a one-on-one face to face. That's where people really get healed, really get spiritually fed, man. It's in that conversation. And it's just, it's just hard to do it via text in congregation. Exactly. Exactly. The congregation, the congregation, um, the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 25, this is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing. Let me read that sentence one more time because it is very, 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 very underlined, very important. This is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together. Why? Because I think if we've learned anything, Nick, in the last two years, it's the fact of that people were never made to be secluded. We're seeing right now that in 2020, the number one cause of death between people 18 to 45 was an overdose from fentanyl. Well, why were people overdosing for? Well, they're by themselves. They're not talking. They're not communicating. They're not together. They don't have any outlets. They don't have a way to express themselves. So how do they cover up and mask the pain? Well, I'm going to overdose or I'm going to take this until I overdose to help cure everything. And that's a problem, right? And it's kind of like what we were just talking about, you know, what was accessible at that moment. Right, I, right. You know, I, I didn't have the ability to go to church because, God forbid, the state police are going to write down my license plate number and report it. You know, I, I mean, almost spit my energy <laughs> drink out onto the table here. I, I messed up our whole new equipment <laughs> at that moment. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just, you know, people were fearful. I mean, really, and it's just the biggest thing over the last two years. I mean, that's where this whole congregation like this um, – Scripture from Hebrews here is just so just mind blowingly in your face, uh, mm-hmm. twenty twenty two. Yeah, um, like look at look at what's been going on. I mean, you know, it's like you're saying. I mean, people didn't have access to in church. They didn't have access to meeting their friends and family. They were stuck talking over text messages. They weren't having that congregation factor. You know, right, being able to see right. each other and you know uh, they knew the local drug dealer where they hung out at because <laughs> that's where they used to do in their partying days. Exactly. Um, right. You know, they were reaching out and in depression. I mean, not to mention so many other horrible things that have been happening recently. You know just so many kids who have committed suicide recently. Absolutely. And, um, you know, not just kids, you know, just adults in general, how, you know, suicidality, suicidality and depression have just been on such a huge uprise lately. Mm-hmm. And it is 100% has to do with, you know, not being able to congregate like we used to, not being able to go to Walmart at 2 a.m. being absolutely crazy like we used to. That sounds horrible. Um, but... <laughs> Still, it sounds horrible. Even in the middle of yeah. what we've been through, that sounds yeah. horrible. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like at the end of the day, it's not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together because like I talked about Sunday, whenever we get together, we draw strength from each other. Um, you know, I see you walking into the church and then I find out your testimony, what you've been through this week, what you've gone through. You might've lost somebody. You might've faced a funeral this week. You might've looked at your bank account and said, oh my God, $7, but I'm still going to trust Jesus and I'm going to church. Um, you know, I mean, there's a thousand things that could have messed you up from going to church on Sunday, but you're there. And then we share in each other's strength. We share in each other's burdens. Even we share in each other's lives and we draw strength from that. Oh man, let me pray for you because now I can lift you up, man. You draw strength from that. So now you're lifting somebody else up. There's something about community that makes a difference. And I didn't say this Sunday and I kicked myself in the hind end for not saying it, but I want to say it tonight. We have let the world, uh, we've let the world change the definition, and I've said this before in preaching, but we've let the world change the definition of what community is. If you look, ladies and gentlemen, if you look, when we start talking about a community, like this church community that we're talking about in Acts 2, do you know what the, do you know what the, 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 the real world or the however you want to call it, the worldly people, do you know what they call it today? They call it a cult. We have, we have let the world begin to label what a church community looks like as a cult. Now, I'm not saying that you have to drink grape juice and handle snakes, you know, to get into the, you know, to get into yeah. the club. I'm not no saying. John Jones. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not saying that you got to be David Koresh burning down places and shooting people. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is, is that. If we were today to step out and go, all right, yo, here we go. This is what we're going to do. 
Uh, we're all going to come. We're going to sell everything we've got. We're going to come together. We're going to make sure everybody's taken care of. We're going to pray every day. We're going to worship every day. We're going to, uh, we're, you know, we're going to fellowship every day. We're going to come together every day, and we're going to make sure everybody's needs are met. We're going to preach and pray. We're going to bring other people into this community. Well, before you know it, <laughs> before you know it, there's grumblings in the community. You've seen those people out there, Hodgenville. My God, what are they doing? They're they're in a field out there right now building houses. What are they doing? <laughs> There's a dude a, walking her down the road with a cross on the back. Yeah, of it's a oh, cult. No. It's a cult. Don't go to fruition church. It's a cult. And, and honestly, <laughs> never even showed up for a service. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you know, like they just you know, yeah. But uh, but but people. I mean, we've allowed the we've allowed the world to label the community of church a cult today. And and honestly, ladies and gentlemen, we have to really bring back that word community and set it in right standing because God meant for people to come together in community to help take care of each other and help pray for each other and help get each other to the standard of where they needed to be in life. Right? Oh, yeah. And it's just one of the things, you know, we've... I mean, a lot of churches just failed to do it, you know, especially over the course of the pandemic. You know, I mean, we've seen some who were able to stand up and, you know, we're still going to have service and we're going to be smart about it. But, you know, we're still going to stand up and be leaders in the community. Right. I mean, exactly. that's what the church was for a long time was the leaders in the community. Exactly. I mean, You're right. It's, it's, it's crazy. Boy, and, and I was going to say, man, like I heard a pastor say the other day and, 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 you know, I don't listen to him a lot, but I thought he was right on target. But he was talking about churches being shut down for like, you know, two years and still being shut down to this day. And, you know, he was like, what are they going to preach about whenever they open back up? You know, are you going to preach about faith? Because that's shot. You're going to mm-hmm. preach about healing? I don't think so. Like, what are you going to preach about? Good merits and character, maybe? I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, there's like, you know, the, the gospel in itself, the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible. And I understand, listen, you know, people can throw different stuff at me all day long. You know, well, Keenan, it, it took faith for me to stand still. It took faith for me to stay in. It took faith for me. That's great. But I don't find anywhere in the Bible where it's like, yo, just stand still, don't move, and just hang out until everything gets better. Now, I get it. I understand. The Bible says in Exodus 14, 14. I get it. You know, just stand still and let God fight for you. Yes, God is fighting for you, but guess what? The whole moment and the whole movement in Exodus started with Moses making a move. Yeah, I mean, the, the word Exodus means yeah, exit. It's a journey. <laughs> it's a flipping journey. You know, so it's like at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, we don't accomplish anything by standing still. There's moments and times that we need to stand still. There's moments and times that we need to stop and we need to, you know, just basically, uh, uh, you know, put a pause on everything and listen to God for direction. You know, listen to God for steps and movement. But, I mean, if he's just having you stand still in one place at one time and your life stands still and your testimony stands still and your prayer life stands still, like, we are not being that light. We're not being that hope to people by just standing still. Or like Hebrews 10.25 says, if we're neglecting to come together. So it says, in fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other onward as we anticipate that day dawning. We should come together even more frequently. Forget Wednesdays and Sundays. We should come together Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Like, we should be having meals with each other. We should be praying for each other. We should be doing a lot of things. Now, I will say this. We have allowed, and you're probably going to throw rocks at me, but we have allowed um, social media. We've allowed... Uh, how do I want to say, technology, electronics, whatever you want to say, we've allowed that to take place, I feel like, of the real thing. What do you think? I, I, under, I 100% agree. You know, uh, these things, you know, like uh, live live streaming church services were meant for people who just can't get out. I mean, you know, people who are sick, people who... There's a difference. Know, exactly. There There's is. a difference between can't and won't. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. I mean, is you know, those people who... Because there are, you know, there are elderly people who can't get out, especially like snowstorm, something like that. They yes. don't want to risk it. Absolutely. Um, you know, they want to be careful and they want to be wise, which, again, that's another huge uh, issue in and of itself. You know, right. trying, well, so many people uh, trying to use their own wisdom here. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it's just one of those things and that we... it says do not yeah, lean on on your own understanding but yeah, you know exactly. right, but go ahead whole go other ahead. message right go, there oh, yeah, man yeah, i'm ready to preach message. go ahead go ahead um but yeah you know it's just again it's exactly what it is you know people are relying solely on that to get their word when um you know you miss out on so much by not being an actual physical service congregating with someone. right right and, and again i mean you know we love doing this i love doing this podcast this is amazing i love doing this 
but it should not replace your feeding and your fellowship and your faith of showing up and, and worshiping God in person and in truth on a Sunday, a Wednesday, or any other day of the week. And one of the biggest things, you know, with, with, you know, we use the social media, like we use this podcast, we use YouTube, Facebook, you know, that's to, to reach people who don't go to church regularly. You know, like you, you have people out there who are like, oh, well, you know, I heard there's a church up there on that hill. You know, I wonder what they're like. So they go to the Facebook, they go to YouTube, and they right, check us out right. and say, oh, you know what? I might give that a shot. Yeah, pre-screening. And mm-hmm. I understand that. I get that. You know, uh, but at the end of the day, you can't just sit there and be like, you know what, I'm going to get fed through this screen or I'm going to get fed through this through these speakers or whatever. It's okay. It's almost like I, I, I call that like an appetizer, mm-hmm. you know, and, and and I want to be able, I don't want to just go sit down at a restaurant and get an appetizer and be like hungry in an hour and a half because that's what some people do, you know, and, and it's the same way spiritually speaking. You, If you get an appetizer, if you get a podcast and that's your only meal, that's your only meal, your only spiritual seven meal, days a week. seven days a week, you're going to be hungry by lunchtime. You're going to be like, I need something else. And whenever you do that, ladies and gentlemen, you're not spiritually being fed. And if you're not spiritually being fed, then you can't grow spiritually. You can't exercise your faith spiritually. You can't grow strong in your convictions of who God is if you're not exercising your faith. But it says it's eager. We got to be eager to urge each other onward, man. We got to be those people who build each other up, right? And I, you know, I said this Sunday, I said, you know, at the end of the day, if you're that person who gets their feelings hurt because they don't show up to church, well, let me solve your problem. Uh, show up, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I left the, I left the part out about people checking on you because people, you know, we get hurt. Like we miss a Sunday. Well, nobody checked on me. Well, here's how you, here's how you solve it. Show up, <laughs> show up to church, you know, yep. and I get it. There's, there's circumstances. I understand, you know, there's, there's circumstances. It's going to keep you out sometimes. I get that. But again, there's a difference between can't and want. And, and, and if we don't, because we don't want to, then guess what? We shouldn't get our feelings hurt because that puts our ho- our hope, our peace, and our joy into somebody else's hands, and we get robbed whenever somebody else doesn't check on us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and again, it just goes back to last week. You know, another excuse. <laughs> another, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, another yeah, excuse yeah. as why I'm not um, going further and seeking more and doing more. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have to rely on somebody else uh, to you know just just kind of discover my own experience. Yeah, exactly, man. And and honestly, if I think honestly, if we allow other people to control when we're happy and when we're not, man, we're going to get a vague description of who God is because God never changes. You know, the Bible says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, but guess what? People change every 32 seconds, if not uh, faster. <laughs> if not faster yeah. Exactly. I mean, people will surprise you. They will shock you and do a whole 180 on you, and you're like, who is this person? Well, you know, newsflash, good news, God never changes. And so, therefore, if he never changes, man, maybe I should be putting my hope, trust, and faith in him instead. With these people right here, they came together, uh, they fellowship, they broke bread together, they they prayed together. Here's something that they did that the last C that I wanted to talk about was communicate. They communicated with each other, man. They communicated. The Bible says that they that they praised, that they worshiped, that they had praise upon their lips, but not only that, man, they were happy for others around them. Man, and that's something that you don't see very often anymore. Even in the church house, that's something. Like when other people are succeeding, we should be happy for them. If other people are being called into the ministry in our church, we should be happy for them. If that other person gets that promotion at that job, we should be happy for them. But we are so competitive. Mm. We are so uh, insecure in our lives that very like comparative oh very comparative i mean like let's be honest man and, and man i'm just how how long we've been in this nick oh we're rocking about 33 minutes oh right 33 now. minutes man i gotta shorten this up just a little bit but i gotta get this off my chest like at the end of the day we are in a community right here in hodgenville kentucky we're in a community that has probably 80 some churches in the county but when's the last time that you had a community revival 
<laughs> yeah. Let's be honest. When's the last time you had some churches get together from different denominations and said, we still praise the same Jesus. We still love the same Jesus. We still serve the same Jesus. So we're going to get together. We're going to praise Jesus. We're going to play some music. We're going to sing some songs. We're going to preach the word. And we're going to hope that, that this community that's lost and dying and, and is tore up and divided in 10 different ways, we're going to hope that we can show them what a true community looks like and they'll be drawn on to that because we're lifting up the name of Jesus. That's what the Bible says. Whenever you lift high the name of Jesus, if he is exalted, he will draw all men unto him. It's crazy. Can you if, imagine the news stories of 80 churches getting together in one small in community? In one small community right. and doing something like that? Like, it would be amazing. But here's the problem. We are so, what did you say, comparative. And we are so insecure that if we were to get together and let's just say, oh my goodness, like we heard somebody preach the other night and I like them better than my preacher. So I might go over here this Sunday. We are so insecure and competitive in how many people we put in the seats on Sunday that we can't cross our denominational lines and get together and have a good time and service with each other because we're so afraid that we might lose five people to another church somewhere. And it is totally let me just say disgusting I feel like that we can't get together and be able to worship God together because we are so comparative in our ministries and in our numbers and in our uh, whatever it may be uh, what we're trying to do that we can't do that man and it just it, it gets under my skin a little bit maybe the energy drink talking but it gets under my skin makes my skin crawl just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we're supposed to be in one mind, one accord. You know, oh. we're sitting here. You know, don't yeah, talk don't about worry. that. Don't talk about one mind and one yeah. accord. Yeah, when I mean, we're sitting here, we got a Baptist Jesus, a Methodist Jesus, a Catholic Jesus, and <laughs> yeah, non denominational Jesus. And yeah, you know, exactly. everybody thinks that we're doing things differently than the other one. You know, in reality, we're all supposed to be worshiping one God and one, you know, the Trinity. And, right. you know, we, you know, just seem like we're so separated because, you know, it's everybody has such different things. Right. And to me, if the church doesn't start looking like the church again, how can we expect people to come into the church? How can we expect people? I mean, because, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we can put on a front, we can. We can put smoke screens out there. We can put stuff on Facebook and be like, come join our church. Best church is side of heaven. You know, all of that. We could do all of that. That's wonderful. But I tell you what, man, people aren't stupid. They may play stupid, but people aren't stupid for the most part. And I guarantee you, if they walk into a service once, twice, three times, and, you know, they're looking around, they're going, well, I mean, why, why don't we ever get together with other churches? and do stuff. I mean, I've talked to other youth pastors in the community. I've talked to other pastors in the community and, you know, and they all say the same thing. Kenan, it's so difficult to get people together. Well, why, why is it so difficult for, I mean, I'll be honest. I was the same person that I sent out a letter to almost 40 different churches in LaRue County about having a community revival. And I had two churches respond to me two out of 40. What are we doing? How are we how are we communicating? How are we how are we being dedicated? How you know, how are we congregating together? And we can't even we can't even come together for an hour on no, a Sunday. There's almost like no words for that. I remember when you first told me that story, I was just dumbfounded. I was Absolutely, like, I can't man. I was like, I mean just and it's you know, that that right there is why people have such a, a bad taste in their mouth when it comes to Christianity. Absolutely. And, um, and you know, and we talked about revivals on Sunday, and I mean it's fantastic, man. If you want to have a revival, you go for it. I mean, you put that service together and you schedule that second week in August and seven o'clock every night and you get that you know special speaker from Oklahoma somewhere that's going to come in and just rip up the floor of God and get people saved and all of that good stuff and you know but at the end of the day ladies and gentlemen let me ask you a question are we really accomplishing anything by staying inside of our own denominational backgrounds getting somebody inside of our denomination who's going to preach teach and believe what we believe instead of challenging our ways of thinking and seeing things and really bringing the community together rather than just getting people saved in our own denomination are we really going to see anything happen yeah i mean our, our goal isn't to add more baptists to the world of god it's to add more souls <laughs> yeah or methodist or baptist yeah, exactly. or you know pentecostal or whatever i mean it's not just i mean I, like you know at the end of the day man like we're non-denominational uh because it's not the fact that i have a problem with denomination it's the fact that i have a problem with laws and guidelines and and this you know you got to look this way you got to be this way you got you, you can't preach from this scripture you can't do this over here like at the end of the day man i believe in trust in the bible from genesis to revelation try not to leave anything out in the process because the bible says that you're not supposed to leave anything out or add to it 
That's what the Bible says. And so if we are to be the church and to come together and to dedicate, congregate, and communicate, then guess what? We're going to have to lay down our differences and, oh my God, you only read the, you know, you read the NLT, I only read the KJV, so I'm getting to heaven first before you. It doesn't work like that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I've got a three-piece suit. Kenan, you preach in holy jeans on Sunday. I'm getting to heaven before you. It doesn't work like that. Oh, Kenan, you've got tattoos on your arm now. Oh, it doesn't work like that. Like, you know, at the end of the day, Nick, I think we spend so much time harping on stuff and, and, and making battles out of stuff that probably to Jesus doesn't make a hill of beans difference. Mm, one one wild story I heard at a church before um, is uh, you know, everybody knows who Jeffrey Dahmer is, and you know it was said that during his last days, um, you know he had committed his life to Christ. Uh-huh. Um, and one pastor had told this uh, to his congregation, and one of the women in the church said, "Well, if he's going to be in heaven, I don't want to be there." <laughs> And I, I just Absolutely can't, insane. yeah, I just can't Absolutely wrap my head around insane, it. <laughs> man. Like when Jesus forgives, he forgives you of everything, you know, mm-hmm. he forgives you of everything and we don't get to judge. Mm-hmm. And it goes back the, to right? that, you know, we only believe he can forgive small certain yeah, things. Yeah. Yeah. Like we don't get to things. judge what he forgives, man. So, you know, what? I mean, if, you know, if, if old Dahmer, man, if he, you know, I mean, I know he ate like 22 people or something, but I mean, at the end of the day, man, if he truly confessed his life to Christ and he gave his heart and he said, Lord, I will follow you for the rest of my days, then who am I to judge whether Jeffrey Dahmer's in heaven running around or not? Yeah, people you know? can get saved on their deathbeds living a whole Absolutely. entire horrible life just like they can Absolutely. get saved at six and live Absolutely. their whole life for God. Absolutely. At the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, we don't get to pick and choose our race, we get to decide if we cross the finish line. Mm -hmm. That's at the end of the day. We get to decide if we cross the finish line or not and get to celebrate with Jesus. It's nobody else's decision. Listen to this verse right here, and we're going to shut this down. It says, Love empowers us to fulfill the law of the anointed one as we carry each other's troubles, Galatians 6.2. Love empowers us to fulfill the law of the anointed one as we carry each other's troubles. Guess what? When we get together and we communicate and we talk, then I can help you with your struggles. I can help carry your struggles. I can help pray with you. I can help lead you to the Lord. I can help talk to you about Scripture. I can do a lot of things if we come together and communicate. But if you sit at home, closed up, not talking to anybody, not getting out, not doing anything, not congregating, not being dedicated, guess what? You're going to deal with each and every situation on your own. And I've said this, Nick, from the very beginning. This pandemic has truly showed us who was committed to God and who has been who's been playing with God 100%. over the last two years. One hundred percent. I mean, this like people we see that you know we believe are so committed to Christ, and then you know they'll be going through some kind of struggle, like they've gone through a loss, a trauma, a grief. Um, and then they just say they don't want to go to church because they don't want people asking them what's wrong. They don't want people caring for them. Right. And, uh, and it's just like, I mean, that's where you're supposed to go. You know, there's people there who care about you, who want to lift you up, who want to pray for you and give you support. Um, but, you know, you want to sit there and grief and pity and, you know, trauma and just sit there and let it, you know, stir up. And <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and that's what like, you know, uh, you know, you show up like average attendance, man, for a Christian in America today is like 56 percent or something, you know, so basically like two out of four services a month. And we think that that's going to be great until something like, I don't know, the pandemic happens. Mm-hmm. And then you find out, oh, my God, like maybe instead of 56, I should have been like 96, at least 86. So that way I, I know, man, I'm committed, I'm reading, I'm showing up, I'm praying, I'm giving, I'm serving, I'm doing all of this stuff, man, because after it becomes a routine, it just becomes secondhand nature to you. You know, I'm not going to get fretted by everything that's going on in the world because guess what? You know what? My world hasn't changed. God is still God. He's still on the throne. He's still doing great things. And even though that my wife and I both um, had COVID back in September of last year, you know what? It still didn't change up my life. In fact, I'll say this much, and then again, we're going to close, but it actually put me more on fire to dive into the Word of God and to read the Word of God differently than ever before. And I think we have a choice, Nick. We can either let what happens in this world confine us or define us. Mm -hmm. Man, I tell you what, I'm going to preach good one of these days. But, you know, (laughs) we Twitter get to Twitter, man. I don't have a Twitter, but I need a Twitter. Um, But but we can either let what happens in this world confine us or define us. One of the two. And, And if we allow it to confine us, man, we will never reach true potential in what God wants to do in our lives. Mm hmm. 
And if, but it, but if if it defines if if we can take it and turn it, because that's what the Bible says. The Bible says He will take and turn and work all things together for the good who who for those who who are loved and, and called according to His purpose. Romans eight twenty eight. If if we can if we can do that and allow that to happen, where God takes it and turns it and works it for the good, how much glory can He get from it? You know what I'm saying? How much can we grow as a Christian? How great can our testimony be to these people that are lost, dying, hurt, broken, and in a thousand pieces out there? You know? But are they going to see it from the house? If we're sitting at the house, are they going to see it? No, man. They're absolutely not going to see it. And all they're going to see is a bunch of fearful people who they thought were committed to somebody who could do the impossible. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So it's time for the church to get back to looking what the church used to look like. Uh, back in Acts chapter 2, we call it the Acts Church, man, and, uh, you know, that's that's what the church needs to be at. So, uh, we hope, man, I, this one kind of went out long, and, and, and I do apologize. Uh, maybe you should listen to it on the car ride to work and the car ride home. I think part that one, should part suffice. Two, yeah, part one, part two, whatever, you know, whatever <laughs> the case may be. Uh, but, but, again, we thank you so much uh, for tuning in. We thank you so much for downloading. We thank you so much for supporting, and, and we just hope that something is said and done in each and every episode that will help somebody turn their life to Christ, depend on Him more deeply, give Him glory, and to help lead somebody else in as well. So if you get a chance, go back, check out the message, When the Church Was the Church. You can check it out on Facebook. You can check it out on YouTube. You can check it out on our website. You can check it out, man. There's a thousand different ways to check it out. www.fruitionchurchky.org. You can always check us out on there. Venmo is fruition-church-1. Uh, Facebook is Fruition Church. YouTube is Fruition Church of Hodgenville. Uh, all of the outlets as far as podcasts, you can just search for Fruition Church. Nick, there's like 37 mm-hmm. avenues now. Man, I'm, t- I'm running out of breath talking about all the ways <laughs> that you can follow us. It's fantastic. I want to say thank you so much for taking on the responsibility to do all of this. It's, it's been refreshing and fantastic at the same point in time. and I'm excited about what God's going to do through it. Oh, yeah. My pleasure. I'm definitely excited to see uh, where this goes. I'm really hoping it does take off. I hope people um, are willing to take the time out to listen, to watch, to look into stuff, to share stuff with other people. Um, You know, because it's definitely just a a huge um, opportunity, like we said, to reach people who wouldn't normally go to church. You know, Uh they'll see the podcast, they'll listen to it, they'll see the YouTube videos, they'll watch that. Um, you know, in that way, you know, it's kind of a, an inlet for them to say, okay, you know, maybe I'll give this a shot. You know, maybe I'll give this a shot. You know, they'll keep moving forward with it. That's the hope. That's the plan. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So we're just going to keep grinding, keep doing this every single week, keep breaking it down. Hopefully we'll reach somebody. Uh, again, just give us a shout out. Let us know, man, how you're enjoying this thing. We love you guys so much. This is Pastor Keenan along with Nick, and we will be back again next week to talk about the everyday Christian. We love you. Be blessed.